Hello and welcome to Making Mindfulness Fun. Today I am sharing how to set up your planner, this time using the Best Self Journal. Welcome to Making Mindfulness Fun. I'm Isabel, the co-founder of Making Mindfulness Fun, and I'm a mindfulness and Enneagram coach. Today I wanted to share with you how I set up my planner using the Best Self Journal. Now, hopefully you've already seen my video on the Best 2022 Planner where I talked about this journal, the Best Self Journal, and if you haven't, I love this journal. The Best Self Journal is really the best journal out there. I rarely journal. I didn't journal for the longest time because I hated writing and I always felt like I didn't achieve my goals or really practice self-reflection. I just saw no benefit. But then I got the Best Self Journal for my birthday one year and I fell in love with it. It made setting goals really easy and not only did it make setting goals really easy, but it made me overall have like healthier, have make every day feel better really, because it helps you not just set goals, but it helps you set intentions, reflect, all of that. So I'm gonna break down how I use the Best Self Journal and how I set my goals using the Best Self Journal so that you can set your goals if you have the Best Self Journal as well. Okay, so step one of setting up your Best Self Journal is that they have you set up your bucket list. They pick 13 things. I only wrote eight here because I didn't wanna have to write it all in small text where you wouldn't see it. I do have the journal right here that I use myself, but I figured it's kind of hard for you guys to see if I hold it up to the camera, so I figured I'd write it out here so that you could see it a little better. So step one of the Best Self Journal is that you write out a bucket list. Now, again, with the Best Self Journal, it's so great, but it has you set goals for three months. It's a three month journal, and so that's 13 weeks, and it has you write 13 bucket list activities for those weeks, so one per week. And the reason they do this is to get you excited and help you start living life with more excitement and do more of what you love. And I love this part because I love newness. I'm an ISTP in the Myers-Briggs type, and it, I want to be prospecting. I love newness. And so this part was really exciting for me because I allowed myself to let out my spontaneity and say the things I want to do. And it helps me add excitement to my week because the Best Self Journal helps you set goals, but I need some excitement along the way or some things that are new to keep me accountable because I get bored by routine. And the Best Self Journal isn't just about like, getting your goals done and then it's in the past. It's about living your best life and being your best self. So some of the goals I wrote were career related and some were just enjoyment related and some were big things where some were small. And I think that's really important when you go to set your goals because we, you're gonna do one of these things once a week. And you always think of the bucket list that they have to be these huge, crazy things, but they don't. It's just things that you want to do or things you, or experiences you want to have. So for example, one of my bucket list activities was to get on someone's podcast. You can see it says just podcast right there. I wanted to be on someone's podcast and talk about the Enneagram and mindfulness and share my message with other people. And because I wrote that goal, I did achieve it. I was on someone's podcast and I talked all about mindfulness for kids and Enneagram. Um, I have a smaller goal here too. So that's the thing with the bucket list as well. When I went to set it up, I didn't just think of big things like, oh, go climb Mount Everest in three months. That's all I have. It's about having small goals too. So when you fill out your best self journal, uh, try to find small things that you wanna achieve too. So for example, I was a barista for four months when I was 14 years old and I'd never been a barista before. I loved it. So I'm a, being a barista is something that I love almost as much as teaching people about mindfulness and personality typing. So when I taught my kids mindfulness course, my first one, I took all the money I made from uh, the course and I told myself if I, I'm gonna make enough money to buy an espresso machine. And that month I made enough money, I bought an espresso machine and now I've been uh, making espresso from home every single day. So one of my goals I set as part of the Best Self Journal was to make a perfect Rosetta Latte art. You know, the fancy stuff you see when you go out for coffee at one of those artisan coffee shops that sell avocado toast? That was one of my goals. Um, other goals I had were like watch sunrise one night, uh, one day from na in nature, uh, go to four coffee shops, read one book a month, uh, grow my Instagram audience, meditate in nature, and work smarter, not harder. So you can see there's a lot of diversity in these. They weren't just things I would do, they were mindsets, they were things for my career, for my self growth. So think about all those areas when you're setting your own goals. And I think that's a really important part to remember because Goal setting is not about achievement. It's about an intrinsic value to make ourselves happier. 
So what is gonna make you feel happier? That was the question I asked myself when doing this journal is how can I act, what's gonna bring me happiness? I'm not gonna just set goals that are gonna make me more successful, which I did mess up a little uh, on the way as part of them. As you can see, I had written, um, I wanted to grow my Instagram audience to 4,000 followers. And I wanted to, I had other goals too, like sell a hundred of my t-shirts. Honestly, I did not reach those goals, but it was also, I can understand why, is that I didn't necessarily want those things bad enough to uh, to achieve them because they weren't aligned with what I wanted. So some of these goals I met because they aligned with what I truly wanted out of life. Think about that when you're setting your goals is what do I want my life to look like? What is the best version of myself look like? What do they do every day? Set your bucket list in alignment with those things. Step two of the best self journal is analysis. I love this part and I think it's the most important part of setting up your best self journal or any planner that you have. This is an important step. You analyze basically where you are now. And as you can see, you there's three, six main areas that you do this for. Your health, your career, your self growth, your finances, your relationship, and your mindfulness. And I think these are so great because they have you rate them on a, in the best self journal. They have you rate these on a scale of one to 10 on where you're at. One being awful, done, nowhere. Uh, 10 being incredible, abundant, amazing. So you rate these six places or these six categories of life and where you are now in them. And you have to be honest with yourself with them because you can't just say 10, I'm doing great, it's amazing because then you can't reach goals. But you also can't be dishonest and say, they're all one, they're all terrible. Setting these accurately and where we are now, being honest about it is the step to getting towards our goals. So when I filled it out for health, I had surprisingly set a five because I just don't feel vibrant. I feel weak and stagnant and I want to be able to do more yoga and breath and be more at ease and I want to be a better climber, all of this. These were aspects that made up uh, my answer for health and for finances. I said it was pretty low because I hadn't made money that season yet and on and on. And so mindfulness was maybe pretty good. But these are six areas that we should on that we honestly rate on where we're doing now. The other thing is uh, two, um, before, once you finish your bucket list, they also have you uh, write people you want to connect with. Here, you can kind of see there. People to connect with, places to visit, and other. So these are also areas that we want to write down what we want to do because these are part of our three month goals. Who are people you want to connect with? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Is it people you haven't met? Is it just like you want to connect with like-minded people? Are there places you want to go? These are all important questions to ask ourselves. And again, this is a three month journal. So when I was filling it out, I had to be realistic in my goals for where I wanted to go and who I wanted to connect with while also allowing myself to dream a little. And I think that's the important part with the best self journal is finding the balance between realism but also stepping one step past realism so getting right outside of what you think is attainable so that you actually push yourself to achieve those things as long as you want them because remember we have to want our goals the next step in setting up your best self journal is doing your habits writing out your habits for the month and doing your weekly planner now I wanted to do these both at once because this part was really impactful for me so when it comes to just setting up my best self journal in general and setting my goals, it really came back to my personality type. And that's why I'm such an advocate for all of them because the Enneagram helped me a lot with setting up my habits and my morning and evening rituals, which I'll get to later. And uh, it also helped me set up my week more because uh, when I use my Myers-Briggs and when I set my big goals, uh, my astrology really helped me. So let me get a pen here. So when setting up your habits, they have you write out um, you have a 30 day, let me just show you guys. You have your 30 days uh, going across and you X off anytime you do that. Um, and so setting habits is a really important part of reaching your goals. And the way you find the habits that are the, gonna be the most important for you comes down so much to your Enneagram. So for example, I'm a nine. I'm known as the peacemaker and I'm, although I'm a nine, I'm also very driven because I've stepped into my growth a lot. And the best self journal in general helps me with stepping into my growth because it helps me stay ambitious and aligned with my goals. And so when it came to the habits part, I had already stepped into my growth nature, but I needed to nurture the fact that I am a type nine. So habits that I need to maintain 
were like uh, doing chill mornings, protecting my morning time so that uh, I could relax and step into my type 9 nature. Um, we all need relaxation, so yoga is a habit that I set. Uh, walking in nature was another one. Things that nurtured my physical body, but also things that helped me step into my comfort, out of my comfort zone were really important as well for habits because habits are things that we just do routinely that we want more of in our life. And I think to make things a habit is a great way to start incorporating more because we can get caught up in, okay, I'm gonna do this once, or uh, we think about what we're gonna do one day when we're the person we wanna be, but we never actually take action to do it now. So turning things into habits is so important. Not only healthy habits, but habits that are gonna push you outside your comfort zone. So I told myself I need to do breath work more. I told myself I needed to work out more, even though I don't really enjoy it. I told myself that I need to not engage with people as much on Instagram because social media makes me feel bad. So there's healthy habits, and then there's ones that make us more uncomfortable, and then there's ones we need to take to nurture ourselves more. So depending on your Enneagram, definitely look into your Enneagram when setting your habits. Um, then, once you set your habits and you write out your 13 uh, goals, then you set up your weekly planner. But before you can do this, you set up, I forgot to mention, we're going to just draw a little squeezy line here, you set your top three goals. Excuse my penmanship. I'm great at setting goals, not so much at penmanship. <laughs> but. This is the main part of the Best Self Journal that I realized I forgot to mention because I was busy talking about the, uh, the bucket list and everything. But they have you set your top three goals for the month. And these, this is the most important part. When we go to set our top three goals, a lot of us, I know, can uh, get caught up in, okay, I gotta think big. I gotta, what is gonna make me the most successful or what's a big goal? Don't think about making big goals. That's the way to ruin your goal setting. Set goals that are aligned with what you want right now, whether it's big or small. So your goal, some of your goals can be any of related to health, they could be related, related to mindfulness, they could be related to relationships, finances, they could be in any of those six categories. So what are the top three things of, of your priorities right now? If it's relationships and you wanna meet new people, then your top three, one of your top three goals is meet new people. That was one of mine. And what they have you do for each of your three goals, once you come clear on them, so like maybe you have meet new people and you want a mindfulness goal, meditate, um, uh, or self-growth, you want to uh, run a marathon, I don't know. Who wants to run a marathon? <laughs> and then maybe you have a finance goal, make a hundred a month, or a hundred thousand, I don't know, make 10,000 a month. Whatever your three goals are, you're gonna write them out and they have to be aligned to what you want. So if you don't know what it is you want though, and you're just doing this because you feel like you wanna set goals and you want to be a better version of yourself, again, this is where the Enneagram and Myers-Briggs and astrology come in handy because they help us figure out what we need in other areas of our life. Because I found I wasn't always self-aware and so typology has always helped me practice more self-awareness because it gave me insights into things I didn't know about myself. So like the Enneagram is great for habits. I think for the goals in general, the Myers-Briggs comes in more handy or astrology because they tell you about specific aspects that you're gonna be working through or struggles you're gonna have. I know as a Myers-Briggs ISTP, I need more hands-on time building. And so that helps me set goals to um, practice building more, to be more creative, stuff like that. They, it's really helpful for setting your goals if you don't know what they are. But once you set your top three goals, they have you set your milestones. How will you know that you've progressed in your goal? And this is a really key factor that I found was a bit hard to write is that, oh, you have to, you have to break the ideas that you have in your mind about what that is gonna look like, what your milestones are gonna look like. So for example, I had set a goal to sell more products. Um, but I assumed that certain actions were gonna get me there. Well, I'll have more page views or I will uh, ask, talk to more people on the street, something like that. And it turns out that selling more products comes in the most unexpected way. This is where the law of attraction comes in. So when you're setting your milestones, just try to be very uh, open-minded to what the ideas could be uh, of the ways you would see that you're getting progressing on your goals. 
And then within each of your three goals, you're gonna write the actions you need to take to reach those goals. This is different from habits. The habits is meant to nurture yourself and just your overall health, whereas your actions for each goal are specific to that goal. And then once you set up those three goals, once you have the habit set up, then there's the weekly planner, which I'll show you guys right here. So here's a weekly planner. It's really messy. You can see I wrote new moon week on this one. That's because I'm into astrology as well. And so writing about the, the new moon is happening and looking into astrology to how I'm going to feel that week kind of helped me with setting my goals because I know that oh, this new moon is going to make me a little more sluggish or I'm not going to, I'm going to be more focused on this right now on my relationships rather than my career. So I should just focus my energy there. And so that helped me a lot. Um, but uh, they have you each week set your top three priorities. They always seem to break, they break it down into threes a lot. Three is the underlying theme for this. So when you're setting your week up, whether you have the best self planner or if you're using uh, just a blank planner, what are your top three goals for the week and how long is it going to take you to do those things? So I had written for this week, usually these are my goals for the week in general were film a YouTube video a day, uh, pin four days a week and uh, publish a blog. Now these were all very career focused things because that week I felt like I needed to focus on my career. And in hindsight, it probably would have been better for me to set goals um, in different areas each week instead of focusing entirely on my career because then I just burnt myself out. So if you're going to set up your weekly planner, I'd recommend that you have one career goal, one relationships goal, and one self goal. And if you can't do that, shuffle it up a little, but try to keep it, uh, make sure you balance out your week. And then you have also your events and deadlines. Um, so if you're a busy person, you have places to be, you write down what activities you need to do that week. And then if you have any other errands, you write that down as well. Now I normally don't have errands, so I turned one of these sections into my bucket list since I travel so much as well. So I wrote down my bucket list for the week. So I had said, um, for this week, uh, I was going to an awesome, to hike out to this awesome fire lookout um, with my family. And so I wrote, that's what I was gonna do that week because that was something I was gonna do. And so I knew that based off of that, by that desire to do that, I was gonna fall behind on work a little bit. And then at the end of the week, they have you um, write out your, uh, reflect on your week, which I think is so important because it helped me realize how much I've actually, how far I've gone um, because I usually don't give myself enough credit. Um, and it helps me, um, they ask two questions at the end as well about how do your key relationships look and how will you make next week better? Um, and I think these are really important questions because uh, I'll tend to want better relationships, but I don't necessarily nurture them. And I don't nurture myself in order to nurture other relationships. So these are really great questions to be asked at the end of each week. And how can you ensure next week is as good or better? It can be a hard question because it's like, oh, I'll just be better. Think about specific actions. What are you gonna change? And I think that was a really eye-opening part for the best self journal for me. And then at the top, you can see they have the win the day score and plan to reality score, which I'll get to in a minute and see, you'll see how it ties in when I get to uh, tell you guys about the daily planning, which I love. So why don't I just erase this and get straight into the daily planning. So the next and final part of setting up your best self journal and uh, using it is you have daily action plans. And that's what I really love about the best self journal and how it helped me so much is that it broke down my actions uh, from three months to every week to every day. So when it comes to planning out your day, you have to though, I'm pretty good at actually, my as a prospecting type, I'm good at setting up my days, but I get lose sight of the big picture goal. And so I really think the Best Self Journal is extremely beneficial for prospecting Myers-Briggs types. Not to say it's not for judging types, it's just that prospecting types could, uh, who want to be entrepreneurial or achieve more, um, it's more set up towards them and it, they'll find it way more shocking. So the final step is daily. Daily planning. And this was actually my favorite part of the Best Self Journal because I did not like journaling before and I did not journal nearly enough and I didn't realize how beneficial it could be and how much planning my day out can kind of help. But, um, just picking it up. They have you start off the day with uh, gratitude. So three things you're grateful for. And that I found this to be 
really cool because I love being able to start off with just my day with a little bit of mindfulness. So some days I'd write, uh, I'm grateful for sunrise, for nature. Some days I'd write, I'm grateful for my friends. Some days I'd write, I'm just grateful for the human experience. But the gratitude really helped me be in the right mindset to then um, reach my goal. Because they have you say, what is your goal for today? Not what are the things you wanna get done. Um, what is your one goal for today? And that is like your goal for living. And I think that's a really great question that helped me a lot is to differentiate the difference between your tasks that you're gonna do versus your goal. This is the best self journal. It's about reaching your goals, not about doing tasks. It's about what you want to be. So some days I'd write my goal for the day was to be myself and to have energy. Some days my goal was to help other people. Some days it was to fulfill myself. My goal was uh, to live the life I want to. Some days my goal was to grow more. And these were the goals that made it so that I could stay aligned with my actions by knowing the difference between goals and tasks. So when you're filling out your best self journal, notice the difference between your tasks versus what your goal is. What is the goal in the end? Are you trying to be happy? If, are you trying to form better relationships? What is the core result? And then from there you have your, they call it uh, targets. I don't know if you can see my marker anymore because it's kind of giving out. I hope you can, but if not, you can just visualize what I'm writing. So what are your top three targets for the day? And so this could be work related, like you already do what you do with the, um, the weekly planning or it has you set your goals for the week. But the daily planner is where you break down your smallest tasks, which tie back to your main three goals. Don't forget your three, this all is about your big picture. You can, that's what uh, is so great about the best self journal is that it helps you not lose sight of the big picture. But some days I would just write that meditating was my goal for the day because I don't meditate. Or some days it would be to write a blog. Some days it would be bigger things, some days it would be smaller. Some days I'd mix it up, some days it would be things for happiness. The, a cool thing is that it's always bringing, the point is to always make your life better. It's not just about your goals. And then they ask you what will make today great. So you write the one thing you wanna do. And then they have your schedule from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. I actually found that I didn't use this one a lot. Uh, I will be honest because I prefer to make it up as I go. Once I have my three goals in place, my three targets, then I can set up my day uh, and make sure I get around to it naturally. For the judging type though, I think this part is even more beneficial because they can think that they like having a routine but they can get caught up in tasks because they wanna get things done. Whereas the prospecting type is more like a hot fuse where they'll bust it out and be done. And so I think either way, the best self journal is good for both types. But I personally didn't use the planner, uh, the schedule that much. And then they have a quote, which are always so amazing. I'm not even gonna spoil them, but they give you a quote every day at the top and they give you place uh, you ref to reflect every day. And this is the, that's the last and important part about the Best Self Journal is that it's promoting mindfulness. And as someone who practices mindfulness myself, there's still so much more work always to be done. And the Best Self Journal really helps you do all that. You check off if you checked your habit tracker, you write your overall mood for the day, and on a scale of one to 10, how good was your day? And that's it for the Best Self Journal. That's really how I used it. Um, overall, uh, I found it really beneficial for helping me stay aligned with my intentions and think about what kind of person I want to be in life rather than getting focused on my goals and thinking I have to do more. It helped me be more who I want to be. And so I hope you get the best self journal yourself. The link is in the description below. It comes in a lot of different colors, which I think is super cool. There's yellow, there's black, and there's also uh, this pinkish orange color, which is amazing. And this really is such a good journal. It's gonna help you find your goals so much. But one last note again is when you're going to overall, when you go to set up your best self journal, remember your Enneagram. Look at your MBTI. and check out your astrology because these three things will help you set your goals this one will enneagram will help you set habits 
Uh, Myers-Briggs will help you figure out what actions you need to take, especially when it comes to career. If you don't know what your goals are for what you want in your career and your finances, the Myers-Briggs can help you feel, uh, figure out how your brain works and how to be successful with that. And then astrology helps you figure out a lot with the mindfulness and the self-growth aspect because especially um, your Lilith, and my marker's not working, so. Your Lilith and your North Node. I've mentioned this before in a video I just did with Robin and Gabby. We talked about how important Liliths and North Nodes are for setting your goals. So, get yourself a best self journal. The link is in the description below. I probably barely touched on how much it's helped me and how great it can be for our growth, no matter what your Myers-Briggs or Enneagram type or what kind of person you are. So hit the link below and buy yourself a Best Self Journal for going into 2022. And if you don't have the Best Self Journal, set up your journal like the Best Self Journal because it's gonna help you so much with setting the right kind of goals. Thanks for watching, namaste.